Hey guys, Mac here again. Now, today's video is not going to be massively interesting to the point I was wondering whether to publish it or not. A colleague of mine has just been out and bought himself a Synology NAS, which is a great bit of kit. One of the things he was a little bit disappointed with was the fact that he was only managing to read and write to that NAS at around 100, 110 megabytes per second. And the reason for that is he had connected it up over a gig ethernet network. Now in the manual, he read about the idea of using link aggregation. So off he trots, buys a switch that supports link aggregation, sticks an extra network card in his PC, and then is surprised to find that even with link aggregation enabled, he's still only getting around 100, 110 megabytes per second to that NAS. And that's what I'm gonna cover in this video. And I've included a demo which just shows you actually what link aggregation does deliver for you. So let's go and have a look at it. Very dry subject this, but I'll do my best to try and explain it. Now imagine this scenario, you've got your PC with a, a one gig connection to your switch and then you've got a one gig connection to one file server or NAS and another gig connection to your another file server or NAS. Now when you copy files, you can only copy at that one gig connection. So you'll get around 100, 110 megabytes per second. Now, of course, that capacity is going to be shared between whatever target you're copying to. So if you're copying to file server one and to file server two, in this scenario, the speed that you're going to be able to transmit is going to be limited by that one gig connection. Now let's look at the scenario if you put in a, an aggregated connection. Now in that scenario, that one gig connection would now turn into two one gig connections. Now in this scenario, you could copy data to two different targets at one gigabit per second. So in this example, we could copy a file to file server one and to file server two, and theoretically would see around 100 to 110 megabytes per second to both servers. So let's go and have a look at a demo of what I'm talking about. Now this is quite a dry subject to try and demo, but I'll do my best to show you what this looks like. So what you can see in front of you is my ethernet connection in Task Manager, and you can see the performance of it there. I've then got a connection up open to two different NAS boxes, two different NAS servers. And what I'm gonna do is just copy quite a large file to both of those NAS boxes. So let's take that one. That's about 40 gigabytes, I think. So we'll just drag and drop that into the top one. And then we'll also drag and drop that onto the bottom one as well. Now, if we look at the performance here, you'll see in Task Manager, we're sending around the 950 megabits per second, which is kind of what you'd expect with a one gig network connection. If I was to run my internet speed test now, for example, let's have a look at that. There you go. Now, bear in mind, my internet connection is actually a gig connection. Now you'll see that my send is still at 950 meg and my receive is currently around the 50 meg point, which is what the speed test is doing. So there's no surprise there, that's over a single gig connection. Now let's look at the same thing when I have both connections connected and we're using it in that aggregated configuration. So let's do that same test again, but this time with both one gig interfaces connected. I'm going to drag that file across to both of those network locations and we can have a look at the performance. This time, notice the transfer speed there is around 1.8 to 1.9 gigabits for the network. And both connections are running at 100 to 110 megabytes per second transfer time. So the machine as a whole is copying data up at around 2 gigabits, but it's only sending around 100, 110 megabytes per second to each of those destinations. So what the aggregate link gives us is effectively a wider connection where we can have multiple one gig feeds to different locations. What it doesn't give us is faster than one gig connections to a single location. Now to show you what I mean, I'll copy an additional file to the top NAS. So let's copy that file there. Now what you'll see is the send speed is still around the 1.8, 1.9 gigabits and the combined write up speed or copy up speed to that first NAS is still going to be around the 100, 110 megabytes per second. What it's not giving us then is a larger than one gig connection. And I think that's one of the most common misconceptions about aggregated connections on ethernet. I told you it wasn't gonna be very interesting, didn't I? I still think link aggregation has its place because if you've got multiple devices that you wanna be able to copy to or read from and get good performance from then perhaps having multiple connections is the way to go i've not gone that way myself i've gone the route of 10 gig ethernet 
because the price of it's come down quite a lot and I like the extra performance that it gives me beyond the one gig limit that you get with aggregated connections. It, now, if anyone is actually interested on how to configure those aggregated connections on the Synology or on your Mac or Windows PC, drop me a comment below and I'll show you how I've done it. I've not covered it because like I say, it's not particularly interesting. And also there's, there's not that many scenarios where it's actually gonna be of that much benefit to you. Anyway, can't say I didn't warn you this was gonna be dull. Until next time.